Brownfield, America's trusted ag source, is available on your smartphone anytime, anywhere. Brownfield Mobile instantly brings you current news, ag market information sponsored by Novozymes BioAg, weather, and more. Plus, you can listen to Brownfield News, including grain and livestock reports. Download it to any smartphone today at brownfieldmobile.com. Use Optimize 400 with LCO Promoter Technology in soybeans for enhanced roots, excellent plant growth, and great ROI. Ask your retailer for Optimize 400 from Novozymes BioAg. Change a light bulb, save some green. Just replace traditional light bulbs with energy-efficient bulbs and fixtures. If you're like most people, 20% of your home electric bills go directly to lighting. Every light we switch to one bearing the government's Energy Star label uses at least two-thirds less energy than older bulbs. Such a light will save more than $30 in energy costs over its lifetime. Brighten your environmental future from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. It'll be continued hot and dry, and we have a heat advisory in effect for our area from 11 this morning through 7 a.m. Saturday. Otherwise, the high today should be near 99, the low tonight 75, and it'll be sunny and hot on the 4th tomorrow with a high near 101. Tomorrow night, mostly clear with a low of 78. This is the award-winning broadcast of Healthy University, bringing health and vitality to you and your family, brought to you by Scotland County Hospital in Memphis. Now, here's your host, Dr. Randy Tobler. Doctor, my eyes have seen the year, and the slow parade of tears without crying. Now Welcome to Healthy You on a beautiful 3 July 4th edition of your Healthy University here on KMEM 100.5. I'm Dr. Randy Tobler, along with Bud... The Stud Wilson. That's this my new word for you. Bud the Stud Wilson. This would be and, our Boomland special. And Elisa. Boomland? Our Boomland <laughs> special before the fourth. All right. How you doing, Mr. Bud? I'm doing good. How are you doing, sir? I am good. I have a couple of news stories here my wife sent along with me. Did one, she? <laughs> one of them made, made her think of you. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Is that the one about uh, <laughs> coffee? Avid coffee drinkers have another mm. reason to stop at Starbucks of a morning because... A new study published in the Journal of Cancer Research on Monday found that coffee drinkers have a lower risk of developing skin cancer. So I guess you can pour the Starbucks on or drink it either way Yeah, uh, to get get some good out of good it. Good antioxidants in another, that coffee. It's yeah. just another reason why I can dr- drink as much java as I want. Well, I guess there's a limit to everything. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, more and more coffee is being vindicated. You know, this, mm-hmm. the wars have been going back and forth. Does it cause heart disease? Does it cause diabetes? Does it cause this? Does it cause that? I, I think what we do know is that it um, enhances exercise performance. There's lots of good studies there. And later when we talk to Dr. Kathleen Weaver, I'm going to ask her about that because she is a orthopedic surgeon who joins us on Thursdays. Yes. But today uh, at the hospital, but today she's via the long lines uh-huh. and uh, we'll take calls and uh, talk a little bit about her practice and her interests. She has a lot of interesting things. I know she she uh, does a lot of extra work other than just bread and butter orthopedics. You know, she's yeah. got a lot of interesting stuff she does. So we'll talk about that. But she's also an athlete. and Very athletic person. Yeah. I don't know if she drinks coffee or not, though. I'll have to ask her. She told me two weeks ago, yes. one cup a morning. Oh, why one. did you ask? How did that come up? I, you know, hospitality Holly here. <laughs> I was <laughs> directing her to the cafeteria for coffee. Uh, okay. She said, nope, I've already had my one cup of the day. Oh, one. Well, see, there you go. Now, is that one of those cups that looks sort of like a 55-gallon drum? Well, oh, I'll have not? to ask her about that. I, yeah, don't, I, don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, I don't know. Or the one that's so th- that's got coffee that's comes out of a compressed steamer and <laughs> yeah. it's like uh you can't even get close to it to drink mm-hmm. it that's strong how they, that's how they drink it in europe cross-eyed right? oh yeah strong yeah. stuff half yeah. coffee half, half milk. i i can i don't like i wouldn't like that because i drink a little coffee in my cream oh are you you like yeah, it that yeah, way? Yeah. That's oh good. man i'm fluffy looks like my pond after a rain uh, yeah <laughs> exactly. Of course, we don't know anything about that lately. <laughs> no, I know. Mm-mm. How are we doing? Are the crops okay? Or are we no. in critical land? Or where are we? I heard I mean, uh, I markets know. this morning said like 58 per, 48% of the corn crop and 47% of the bean crop is critical. Wow. Mm-hmm. Is Yes. Well, and 18% of the hay crop. 
I don't know. You'll have to listen to Bob the and I may have to don them. along with Dave Bowden and maybe Rick Fisher. Maybe the four of us could don our traditional headdresses and uh, Indian, you know, things, and we could do our little rain dance. You think that would be effective? Headdresses and loincloths. Loincloths. Yeah. I think it would yeah. probably scare it away rather than bring it. That's the point. Now she. <laughs> 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 when the rain man above sees us in loincloths and headdresses, <laughs> he'll cry, uh, okay, and that'll be well, rain. This, uh, yeah. This is an option. Well, I don't know. I hope for all the farmers out there that, uh, and, you know, the cattle are struggling, too, I know, in this mm -hmm. hot weather, too. It's not good on them. It is. It's I hope that we do get some rain. Yeah. And that, uh, so tell me about what your wife's story is. That uh, Well, she, she thought about you when she saw this story. Sure, blame it on Helene. Burn more fat, spend more time in bed. <laughs> and she thought, sleep. When she thought of sleeping, she thought of you. Because well, I don't know why that would be, bud. No, I'm either. kidding. She did not. She did not. That hey. was me. That was me. You know, you know something about Rip Van Winkle. I don't know. All seriousness aside, Methuselah. There is something to that, though, yeah. because you know as well as I do, and it is a true fact that if you, after you have had a night's sleep, whatever that may have occurred, or however long it was, when you get up in the next morning, you're an inch taller. There's no lie there. That's guaranteed. It's a true fact. So, if Physique-wise, when you get up in the morning and take that first yes. sideways look in the mirror, yes. well, you're an inch taller, so things are stretched out a little more, so you look an like... An inch taller? Where did you get that from? Oh, that's true. That's Have you tried to touch your toes in the morning? You can't do that. <laughs> no, I haven't an tried An inch to... taller? What are you talking about? Do you sleep on a rack? No, <laughs> no. It's just... Takimoto? It's... <laughs> It's true. Now, during the night, your yeah. your body relaxes and your spine expands. And so the first thing in the morning when you get up, you're taller. Hmm. Okay. I don't by, know. The, I, by the end of the day, you're, you're an inch shorter. Professor, please. Are you kidding me? I saw it on TV. Oh, well, well, it must well, be true. Then, you know, <laughs> it has then, to be there true. you have it. Was that on the Kadar you Kardashians the or which show did you Actually, see that on? Stuart Colbert? No, oh. no, it That's was, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of it, uh, I didn't take my coconut oil. No, there was a study in the journal Sleep uh, that compared uh, 1,100 pairs of twins. And researchers learned those who slept less than seven hours a night had a higher BMI, body mass index, mm -hmm. um, which is one measure of being overweight, you know. And they found that genes, infl because it's a twin study, you know, those are good studies because right. you can sort of sort out nature versus nurture. They found the genes influenced about 70% of that high BMI. For twins who got more than nine hours sleep, genes contributed only about 32%. What they're thinking is that something about getting extra sleep may suppress obesity genes. We wow. don't know. Mm -hmm. I think it may potentially have something to do with differential expressions of cortisol. You know, we've talked about cortisol, the yes. stress hormone that tends to take calories and go right into fat. Right. Uh, and we know that people that are sleep deprived, uh, tend to have higher levels of cortisol Absolutely. and they have a hard time keeping weight off, especially yes. around their midsections. Yes. And so it may have something to do with that. But, um, and there's other things. It could be that it's knocking several, one of several other hormones out of whack. Ghrelin, we've heard about that. That's mm -hmm. the hunger hormone. Okay. Leptin, that's the hormone that tells you to stop eating. Ghrelin yes. is the, you know, tells you to eat. Insulin, of course, is a fat storing hormone, uh, human growth hormone. And of course, I mentioned cortisol. So they're more in line and, and you're healthier if you get, uh, what, are we going uh, back to the eight hours idea? I, I think that eight hours is sort of a magic, nice little magic mm -hmm. number. And, of course, that's just, a, that's just a guideline, a general guideline. But we know that in general, when they've looked at studies, people with, and usually the ranges are between seven and a half and eight hours, uh, or seven to eight hours. So, I mean, yeah. there's a little bit of a, of a thing. I've had p very normal, trim, you know, healthy, don't have to work at it. Mm -hmm. Folks tell me, though, man, I can't sleep more than six hours a night, and I'm, no matter whether it's vacation or not. Yeah. So I don't know. Different reason, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, anyway. Well, speaking of fat, Mississippi claims the title again for the fattest state. And this is like mm. the seventh time in a row. Now, um, why do you think that is? Before you tell us about the study, what would be, based on everything, you are now sort of a brown belt in the field of nutrition and wellness, having co-hosted uh, the yeah. show for all these many, what, brown two belt. or three years, <clears throat> working on your black belt. Yes. W what would you surmise are the reasons? why Mississippi may have may have higher rates of obesity? Well, I, I'm going to tell you straight up. I, I think that a lot of that could have been prevented. Mm -hmm. 
And um, it's socioeconomic, and and it relates to medical issues. Well, Alabama's second. Yep, yep. So, lots I'll, of poverty. Well, yes, but but look at what they eat. But that there probably is, relates to the poverty because you can buy certain things much more cheaply with you know with more money more food for less money basically you know exactly. if you're eating the kind of foods that may be related to obesity sure and that's where i first learned how to defat fry a snickers candy bar so you got to put that as <laughs> that was at the iowa state fair no, no? well that it, that one too there you can get them there yeah. you're an equal opportunity yeah, junk yeah. food eater at the sta- yeah, at the yeah, yeah, speaking absolutely. of the fair we have a fair coming up next we week. do and we will be there we will have where a would that be that will be at <laughs> no. Scotland County Fairground in beautiful, right. just south of beautiful yeah. downtown Memphis. Yeah. And we will have a fair booth there yes. uh, in the art hall that week. So you're welcome to come out, get all kinds of information from us and um, uh, a free gift and enjoy the fair. A free gift? Yeah. Giving away stuff? Yeah. Wow, that's great. And my And I understand that they'll be doing a lottery my marketing director just rolled her eyes. I understand they're going to be doing a lottery with a free service to be added at Scotland County Hospital. Now, you know, Elisa, in most lotteries with on-air type promotions, you know, with radio shows, they don't allow the hosts and the co-hosts and so forth and people affiliated to be in the lottery and to be in the... Mm-hmm. But this one, I think we ought to make an exception. You know, you're giving away that colonoscopy. That's right, the so colonoscopy. I think we ought to stuff the lottery box with uh-huh. Bud Wilson. Bud Wilson, Bud yeah. Wilson, Bud Wilson, Bud Wilson, Bud Wilson, Bud Wilson. Bud Wilson. Yeah. That's right. Go you, to the fair and you guys win a colonoscopy. You guys can't cheat. Yeah. That's cheating. You have to you have to do it honestly. <laughs> I hope not no one else calls in about that because I've been trying to put all that behind me now. Yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Bud, you're sick, man. You know that. <laughs> what, what, what was the other story your wife had? You said two. No, no, no. That was the one that we had. Well, oh. I, I well, want to know about this whole. She being thought of an someone inch sleeping taller. all the time. She thought of Bud. <laughs> I, I've been an inch taller when you wake up in the morning. You know, we have one of those gravity inversion tables. You know, that turn yep. you upside down and stretches really? you out. And you know, if you laid on one of those all day, you would feel thin and tall all yep. day with with perky features. You know, no wrinkles, no saggy <laughs> anything. If you just laid on one of those tables all day. Or your head would look like a giant toad <laughs> or a tick filled with blood. I don't know. After about <laughs> five Tobler, seconds, that's, that's, that's Elisa. <laughs> and there's Bud. We'll be back with Dr. Weaver to bring some sensibility to the program. Thank you, Dr. And talk about orthopedics, okay? We'll be back here on Healthy You. The number is Bud. In case folks would like to talk to Dr. Kathleen Weaver. 1-800-748-7875 and 660-465-7225. If you are going to need floor covering soon, stop in at Carpet One at 2915 North Baltimore in Kirksville. Stop by, visit with Justin, and browse the huge selection of flooring at Carpet One in Kirksville. For a limited time, they have 50% off on select carpet and huge savings on wood and vinyl flooring. And listen to this. Mention that you heard this ad on KMM and received one room of carpet installed for free. That's Carpet One in Kirksville. I feel a shiver run up my spine. I feel the warmth of her hand in mine. Ooh, I hear laughter in the rain. Walking hand in hand with the one I love. Ooh, how I love the rainy days and the happy way I feel And we're back. It's 20 after the hour here on KMEM 100.5 and Healthy University, sponsored by Scotland County Hospital. And come down and say hi. There will be various people at the booth uh, at the fair next week, yes. right? Yes. In the heat in the art hall. Is it still going to be hot next I week? I think Is there no relief in Dave Bowden, phew, yeah. shoot him, said the 7 to 14 day outlook. They have to way. talk to Dave about that. Yeah, Dave has all the power in the world to change That's that. That's terrible. 
Well, joining us now is Dr. Kathleen Weaver, who uh, joins the staff here at uh, Scotland County Hospital. She's been here for a good month now, right? About a month mm-hmm. on Thursday afternoons. Uh, well, Thursday all day. And operating and seeing you in the clinic and taking care of your various bone and joint um, anomalies and maladies. And, um, and she comes by way, don't you, Dr. Weaver, of very, very typical, bland, vanilla <laughs> training. I mean, you know... <laughs> <laughs> trained, at, trained at UCLA, uh, undergrad, and then right. grad school in kinesiology, which led to med school at University of uh, California, Irvine. And then, oh, there was that little orthopedic residency in Phoenix. And, this, you know, and by the way, you were raised in Beirut, Lebanon. Ah, very typical American life. <laughs> How are you doing, Kathy? Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And I have rarely seen someone with so much energy and passion for what she does, does mm-hmm. as Dr. Weaver. I have to tell you, um, she's very, very, uh, if you look, you know, when, when you came, I couldn't believe it. We had to buy, we had to send out to the paper company and buy more paper because we were printing out the list of procedures you do, you know, just to sort of help, you know, let all the doctors know the things you do. Um, it, it's, um, it's an amazing array of things you do. I know you have special interest in certain areas, but... Is that just what's happened to the field of orthopedics, or is that just you? Well, it, it, <laughs> truly, the, the field of orthopedics is getting more and more specialized. Um, I'm a little bit of a dying breed, a true general orthopedic surgeon, because yeah. I enjoy, I, I guess from my kinesiology training and the study of human movement as an undergrad, I, I enjoy more than just one body part. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. So it, it makes it uh, interesting and challenging. Um, but obviously, you know, you want to be very good at what you do. So, you know, what I do extremely well, I do well. What I don't think I'm the, the top in the country, I will refer to someone else to do. Yeah, but I think you under, I mean, you know, you're humble because we've heard about the quality work you do. And I did a little homework on you. I've talked, uh, I've oh. talked to physical therapists all around Central and North Missouri who have worked with your patients. And don't you know, folks, those are the people who know the orthopedists that do the best work because they'll tell you, aha, those are the people that recover the best, and mm-hmm. uh, she always gets great accolades. What's the secret to success from a patient's standpoint when you see the orthopedic surgeon in terms of what can, because, you know, you're here once a week. It's not, you know, and we hope that eventually you'll be here like every day of every week, you know, but um, when people come to visit you at Memphis Medical Services, um, wh- how, can, how can they help you make that visit more meaningful in terms of what they bring to the table with either uh, their story, their history, their records, whatever? Probably the most important thing is a good history of how long something's been hurting, how it's hurting, have you had a trauma in the past, do you have a family history of similar problems, um, because trauma in orthopedics uh, triggers a lot of cascade of events. Um, And then family history is extremely important as well. So usually when someone gives a really good history, Mm -hmm. even without putting hands on someone, which we always do to make sure we we validate what the person is feeling and saying, but Mm -hmm. uh, usually you have a pretty good idea of what's going on if they've given you a really good history. Yeah. And and I know that's because uh, because really the doctor's mission, no matter what type of doc, is is sort of a Sherlock Holmes. It's a detective story. You have to try to put together a, a bunch of different connected, disconnected pieces of facts and try to help you know coalesce them into a into a diagnosis. Um, and so yeah, those kind of historical things. So it's not beyond a, the reach for someone to if they start noticing they're having pain in their knee. Um, you know, maybe, yeah, Advil's cutting it or Tylenol's cutting it or whatever, uh, Anna, you know, Aleve is cutting it as far as managing the pain. But you would like to know when is it better? When is it worse? Uh, you know, when does it swell if it swells? When does it click? When does it pop if it grates? All of those little things that many of us may just sort of dismiss, you need to know every little detail because that really helps hone your, your findings. Correct, correct. And what we really want is, a diagnosis, once we know exactly what something is, then we just lay out what can we do about it. And then the patient can be involved in the decision-making process of, okay, I have time for this, don't have time for that. I'm in the middle of of soybeans right now and I can't, and what can we do to to save time and energy and and stave off what we have to do? So it really depends on the patient's um, pain level it depends on their ability to interrupt their life if it's not life-threatening injury. 
Um, and then we just, you know, once we have a diagnosis, we can lay out these are our options and invite the patient to participate in their care of how would you like, you know, here are our options, what would you like to do? Doctor, are you able a lot of times to get a definitive diagnosis before you um, ever um, go into the OR, or are there times when you're going in uh, and finding out what's going on after you're there? Both. Both. Um, so we have, if, if we're compared to, there was a study that was done a while ago, an orthopedic surgeon is, as good as an MRI, sometimes even better. But the nice things about MRI is it keeps us away from any surprises. Mm -hmm. um, now, that being said, MRIs don't always tell the truth, and we have to be mm -hmm. ready for surprises even if we have an MRI that validates most of what we're thinking. Yeah. Um, you still have to be ready for getting in there and seeing something that the MRI completely missed for whatever reason. So you always have to be ready for uh, everything when you go in the operating room. Dr. Weaver, Early in the show, you said there are things that you do well and there's things that you refer out. Uh, tell us what it is that you most enjoy doing and what you most enjoy um, seeing outcomes and what you do well. Go ahead and bring on yourself. We're going to let you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I won't tell your mom or dad. You can brag on yourself. Go ahead. Okay. Toot your vanity, vanity, yeah, that's right. Vanity. Toot your own horn. Toot toot. <laughs> that's right. Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy helping. And that sounds really vague, um, but I enjoy, I, I'm very good at, at making a diagnosis. So we, okay. I will see lots of people that have seen four or five docs, and they're not quite sure what's going on. And through the help of teamwork with other physicians, rheumatology, x-ray, you know, getting a diagnosis. And then treating that diagnosis, um, and I enjoy arthroscopy, fracture work, you know, children's work. You know, sports medicine, there are a lot of times you don't necessarily have to operate on kids with sports medicine injuries, but sometimes you do. And so you want to get them back to the field as quickly as possible. Um, and that's, I'm, I'm very good at that. Um, so your general day-to-day -day injuries um, are just fun to get to the bottom of and treat. <laughs> And then your complex injuries are fun to get your mind wrapped around and figure out, can you figure it out? Can you help the patient? And, and those are always, they're a mental challenge, and sometimes they're not a surgical answer, but it's the diagnosis that's so difficult to make. Um, you know, some genetic diseases in the area mm. are creating joint stiffness or mm. creating problems. And if you get to the bottom of it, you can get treatment and save the joint. And maybe I'm not a good business person because if I don't operate, I... You know, you don't generate your, in quotes, income, but <laughs> you've, you've really helped the patient. So it's, it's, a, it's a very broad area that I'm interested in. It's not just pediatrics or just sports medicine. It's uh, helping. And a little bit later, I do want to talk about one of the related fields. You mentioned, you know, being, being involved in sort of making diagnoses other than the core. We need to change that knee out. You know, I mean, I think we all know that's one of the roles of orthopedic surgeons. But, um, and I know you have an interest in osteoporosis and education about it, and I'd like to talk about that a little bit later in the program. Mm -hmm. um, but I think w what you said was interesting. I think a lot of folks think that if... Um, you're having a problem, give uh, one joint or another or some, you know, muscle or bone ache here and there that you're going to, once you make the appointment with the orthopedist, you have started down the yellow brick road and you are going to end up in the surgery. That is just an inexorable march to the operating room. And in some of our earlier conversations, I was fascinated that you really, really emphasize the conservative management of things whenever possible. Um, and I guess that involves, again, a team approach. You make the diagnosis, you make the physical therapy prescription, maybe uh, rheumatologic prescription, other type things or recommendations, and then you involve uh, those helpers to help get the patient where they need to be. The, the body's an amazing organism, and, and it's made to heal itself. And um, sometimes through various problems, uh, whether it's alignment issues of the of the lower extremity, maybe you know feet that no longer fit the shoes correctly or whatever, mm -hmm. it can create a uh, a cascade of effects. And there's a lot that can be done non-operatively. Now, I love to operate, so don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm a surgeon, and that that is I I love being in the operating room, and and there is immediate gratification of seeing things change immediately. And 
I don't have to give someone a pill. You know, we go in, we do a good job, and we help. Very good. And so, don't get me wrong. <laughs> 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 but if the op- if if the operation operation isn't necessary, then certainly we're not going to go that route. If there's any way that the body can take care of it itself. We're talking with Dr. Kathleen Weaver, who is an orthopedic surgeon with uh, lots of uh, very, very high-grade, high-level training, and she brings that expertise here to Scotland County Hospital on Thursdays. Um, if you would like to schedule an appointment with her, Bud, the number? Yes, uh, 660-465-2828, Memphis Medical Services. And we will be back with more. And We invite your phone calls for Dr. Weaver. We have a lot more to talk about here on the program. Yes, it's the day do. before 4th of July. And she's here the day after 4th of July. <laughs> that could be a good or a bad combination, depending <laughs> on how you look at it. <laughs> well, let's hope one has nothing to do with the other. I know. The numbers are 465-7225. And 1-800-748-7875. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay there. before the fourth fabulous doctors usually appreciate fabulous music let's ask dr kathleen weaver do you like michael buble and fabulous music <laughs> i do i i have very <laughs> eclectic taste in music so i like all sorts of oh. things there too I, i've got some ram fear in the pan flute on tap here if you'd like that if you like no, some eclectic can, stuff no i'm you kidding you can put some irish uh, ah, too, there you you go. Like, so. <laughs> so what do you listen to in the operating room <laughs> yeah <laughs> actually i do not um, and there's a reason for that. Um, women's voices are extremely difficult to hear. Mm-hmm. And so in the operating room, I um, am not, I don't have music because people start paying attention to the music more than to my voice, and then mm-hmm. I have to repeat myself, and that slows down an operation. So that's one area that um, I'm not terribly bon vivant. Um, <laughs> I'm very focused. Yeah. And I, I kind of uh, expect other people in the operating room to be the same way. So some people can listen to music, but mm. to me, I find that uh, I'm doing only one thing at a time, either listening to music or operating. Yeah. So very focused. Yeah, the distra- <laughs> I find the distraction is often much more than it's worth. You know? There's so, the excuse yeah. I needed. What's that? I can't hear my wife's voice, so <laughs> therefore I don't have to listen. <laughs> that, that's selective hearing. That's oh, selective. <laughs> oops. <laughs> You know, you mentioned child, you know, uh, pediatric orthopedics, and um, I am concerned. I think all of us are concerned. I know it's a special interest of my wife. It's a special interest of Michelle Obama. It's a special interest of a lot of moms about childhood obesity, and we hear about, of course, how that's is probably going to turn into you know early diabetes, heart disease, everything else. And we know that we've been hearing about how obesity in general means arthritis. As an orthopedic surgeon, I mean, are you really worried about this, or is there much to do about nothing? No, it's extremely worrisome. There are there are several things that children have that adults don't have, and one of them one of them is growth plates, and um, the other one is the ability to grow. And there, if the the growth plates are the weakest area of a child's bones, kids really don't ever sprain; they actually break. Their ligaments are twice as large compared to an adult if you look in the ratio of the size of the ligament versus the bone. But the growth plate is very, very fragile. And if you get too heavy, 
you can develop special kinds of bowing mm. uh, at your knees uh, because of uh, too much pressure on the inside of the growth plate. You can develop uh, very severe hip problems called a slip capital femoral epiphysis where the growth plate of your hip just slides off. Oh, wow. And so when you're heavier, you know, some, sometimes those are also genetic, but when you're heavier, you're much more prone to these things. Mm-hmm. Also, if you don't have strength and balance, if you're trying to run and you fall and mm-hmm. you don't have the ability to catch yourself, you're mm-hmm. much more likely to sustain a what we call a displaced fracture mm-hmm. rather than just a little crack in the bone, mm-hmm. which is still a break in the bone, but it's a, it, the, the fracture moves off and it can practically stick out of your skin. So when you start looking at the kinds of difficulty that heavy children who are not coordinated develop, can develop, uh, they, these are very significant, and they are uh, they have the potential of creating lifelong problems. So uh, obesity is a very big deal, and it's something that needs to be uh, aggressively treated like a disease, not not a shame. That the real mm-hmm. issue that people um, people treat it like it's a shameful thing, as opposed to a true medical problem. Yeah, that has so many ripple effects across every organ system, it seems. Uh, we're talking to Dr. Kathleen Weaver, orthopedic surgeon extraordinaire. And, uh, you know, you mentioned as one of the contributors to the obesity uh, that we see in children, the sedentary lifestyle. I think that's well documented along with, you know, it's a combination of diet and, and exercise or lack of, of exercise. But that lack of exercise in a sedentary lifestyle really can affect us from an orthopedic standpoint all throughout the lifespan, including uh, women and some men who develop weak bones on the other end of the lifespan and don't have that uh, flexibility and agility and strength. I mean, it becomes uh, almost an equally, if not more important issue then. Your thoughts on that? Well, it's, it's a great point. First of all, we know in young women that you only lay down bone up until about the age of 18. Then by the age of 26, women's hormones start to decline, and average menopause is about 51, and so if you have not developed adequate bone by the age of 18, um, you really are in a great deal of trouble, and if you don't maintain that bone up until about 26 through activities and and exercise, then when you start going into your hormone decline, uh, you can really lose bone rapidly, uh, and then after menopause, within the first two years, a lot of your bone can disappear. So you really want to go into this whole life cycle with a decent store of, of decent bone. Men don't tend to get osteoporotic until after 65. That's when the testosterone level starts to decrease more. So we, we, we tend to focus on women with osteoporosis, but if men have hormone issues, you know, early problems, they can certainly develop them as well. And so if you do have a problem, though, with osteoporosis or osteopenia, thin or or brittle bones, um, being being as as, uh, fit and and having as much strength as you can and supporting that skeleton, which may be a little fragile, is, I think, often an um, underestimated and under-advised component of avoiding that fracture eventually. Because in most cases... A person with osteoporosis walking through down the street isn't going to fracture something. It's usually when they have the minor bump, the minor tip, the minor fall. And, um, you know, I, how do you feel about making active programs to try to, you know, avoid having that incident which makes that bone crack? I, I think it's exceedingly important, and this is where prevention is key, because, and there are several things that go into that. Number one, getting young people to exercise and lay down decent bones so that no matter what happens, no matter what what happens to them in the future, they have a good baseline. The second thing is, is once you make that diagnosis, we know that you need to exercise. Now, that doesn't mean going out and jumping and pounding because depending on what kind of osteoporosis someone may have, that can create the problem. But doing uh, stable exercises where you, your foot is attached to a machine, walking, not, not on a treadmill, but on, on flat ground, uh, basic weight training. Bone is living tissue, and if you stress it, it will improve. But here again, you have to have adequate calcium, magnesium, vitamin D. And then if you don't have the ability 
hormonally to lay down that bone, then you need to actively seek out a medication that will help improve your bone density. And it's extremely important that people are aggressive about this because stress fractures occur in 80% of women over 60, and they hurt. Wow. Mm. And they do this spontaneously. You don't even have to bump. You can have just a crunch of your spine. Mm. And part of our reason for getting shorter is, is dehydration of our discs. But the other part is a little crunch here and a little crunch there. And many, many women develop an aged, aging scoliosis, a curvature of the spine that can be very significant and annoying. Uh, it makes mm. you look different. It makes you shorter. Um, and then... Here again, if you don't maintain an exercise program, you don't have the strength to have decent balance. And they, they did an interesting test of women over 70. The ones that they taught balance training decreased their fracture rate by 80%. Wow. That is not something to sniff at. Mm-hmm. That's and a that's huge hip number. Fractures, shoulder fractures, wow. wrist, you know, wrist, and all of these are painful. So yeah. if you can prevent this level of pain, uh, why wouldn't we? And I don't like to do fright radio, but there are occasions when it's appropriate for people to hear some pretty frightening statistics in terms of, you know, we hear so much, and I'm glad we do, about breast cancer, its impact on women, its threat to women, the, the, the life-altering nature of that disease, and sometimes life-ending nature, although we're doing a better job of catching it early. But I've read statistics that, you know, a, a woman at age 55 is more likely to die of an osteoporotic complication than she is of a breast cancer complication. Because, for instance, and I'd like you to speak to the numbers, I mean, hip fractures are life-threatening diseases, right? I mean, I think most people really realize how serious an osteoporotic fracture can be. They are. And the, the, comp- the, the problem is, once you sustain an osteoporotic hip fracture, it's very often considered a general picture of your health. Mm. Now, if you fall and traumatically sustain a fracture, that's a little bit different mm-hmm. than someone who has a minor bump or sits down on a toilet seat and breaks their, their hip or mm-hmm. pelvis. Mm-hmm. Um, there, you know, there's different flavors of hip fracture. Mm-hmm. Um, but when someone is um, just tripping and not able to catch themselves and has severe osteoporosis and is in a nursing home, the complication rate after hip fracture surgery can be 50% mortality uh, within a year. That's a huge, huge number. So here again, prevention, prevention, prevention. You, you just, it, it's very, very important. And prevention starts actually prenatally. Um, <laughs> You hate to think about that one, but, but our, our, our women need to be really focusing on good nutrition uh, prior to becoming pregnant. Then when, they, when we have children, mothers and fathers need to encourage uh, boys and girls for not only good nutrition but exercise because the better your nutrition is, uh, the less likely you are to manifest whatever's in your genetic pool. Um, so it's really important that all of this stuff, we, we have to revamp our thinking, not just for day-to-day, but for pre-pregnancy, during ch- childhood, and then, you know, as we get to be uh, women, we, we can't just settle into no activity level, men too, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's exceedingly important, you know, motion is life, and, mm-hmm. and bone is living tissue. If you don't take care of it, it goes away. So we, if as long as we're not going out there trying to kill snakes when we're 65 and and we're walking on a flat, I th- I thought that was really interesting. You want us to walk on a flat surface instead of on a treadmill? I heard you say that. Unless you can stand on one foot for 30 seconds to a minute without wobbling, uh, treadmills tend to be very dangerous if you mm-hmm. pick up any speed whatsoever. Oh, I see the balance thing. You don't have your balance. You're keeping up with a machine as opposed to keeping up with yourself. And I see a lot of uh, stress fractures of the feet, meniscal tears, sacroiliac problems, all sorts of stuff that comes on because people have decided, I'm getting in shape today. They do too much too fast. And then... They get on that treadmill and just go too hard, and then they go backwards six weeks of recovery because wow. they started too fast in the first place. Yeah. So people get very frustrated. 
So I take it you don't approve of my running on a treadmill because I like to watch the TV while I run. Uh, it depends on what kind of balance you have. <laughs> you know, yeah. we can test you. Come on in Thursday. <laughs> I, I might do that. <laughs> Four six five two eight two eight. That's right. <laughs> and we do want to remind people, uh, Doctor Weaver, you do uh, recommend that folks see a uh, their primary care doctor and then get a referral before they see they, you. They right? actually don't need that um, in, in uh, to to come into the. Uh, to the hospital up at uh, um, Scotland County. Mm-hmm. Um, if if they have a, a, a known orthopedic issue, you really do not require a referral oh, okay. except certain people's insurances. I see. So, so check with the uh, with the staff there to make sure that you know you're doing the right thing there. Correct. Okay. So if your insurance requires a referral, then please get one because otherwise they 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 have a tendency of not being very helpful. Um, but most people's insurance does not require a referral. And the best thing to do is call your insurance company, mm-hmm. and they will tell you, do you require a referral? If you do, please see your primary care physician. Doctor, I'm 65. Talk to me about vitamin D for a minute. Okay, sure. Um, vitamin D went through the phase of being a, they call an end all, and we've calmed down a little bit. We uh, The pendulum swings in the United States. And what we do know is... Uh, it was a great Scientific American article a couple of years ago that talked about the layer of vitamin D that people get depending on where you are in the country if you stand outside. And what they showed was that in Missouri, there's only three months out of the year that if you're out in the sun 15 minutes a day, you even get adequate sunshine to get adequate vitamin D. Wow. So if you're outside in the winter, you may get slight amounts but not large quantities. And if you want to get what, you know, a normal dose, of normal requirement of vitamin D is, you know, eating salmon three times a day is one option. Mm-hmm. Um, the other option is taking a supplement. However, too much vitamin D is also dangerous. So right now we know that vitamin D is extremely important for joint health. We know it has to do with viral health. If you don't have adequate vitamin D, no matter how much calcium you take, you're not going to put down bone. Mm. So... Get a blood test. Ask, you know, have an open communication with your physician. Um, talk to them about your concerns. Uh, go in and, and see if, if uh, you can get a, a blood test done for your vitamin D level. And if you're lower, that right now the recommendations are between 40 and 80 of your, your numbers for blood. It used to be 30, but we've kind of upped that a little bit. And if you're between 40 and 80, then keep doing what you're doing. If you're not between 40 and 80, then you should be on supplementation. Um, And usually there's a weekly pill that's kind of a large dose that they'll give people for about five weeks. And then retest the blood and then put people on a regular supplement, uh, usually D3. um, And then check it again. Make sure that your regular supplementation is not going too high. And then stay on it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because that's the other problem is people feel fine and sure. then they yeah. then they stop. Especially as old folks tend to want to quit taking it. <laughs> Correct, and and it's okay if you can get it nutritionally, but but like I said, uh, it's it's very difficult to get an adequate amount. You know, we don't live by the sea; we don't have access to uh, to that kind of mm-hmm. seafood. Um, Oh, if I could eat salmon three times a day, I would, though. I love salmon. (laughs) Dr. Kathleen Weaver joins us. Do you have another segment for us? Just a few more minutes? Dr. Weaver? Oh, whatever kind of question you would like. Wonderful, because I know Elisa had a question um, about uh, achy, breaky joints. Well, not so much breaky, but just (laughs) achy joints. Sure. And what we can do about those when we come back. Stay right there, guys. If you're listening, we appreciate you being here. We know you could be somewhere else on Tuesday morning. We thank you for being here on Healthy You. Dr. Kathleen Weaver joins us. We'll wrap it up after this break. Stay there. Hey, John, freeze. John, what the heck are you doing? Mike, you told me to freeze, so I stopped moving. I meant give me that freeze highlight, big boy. Swing and a high drive to center field. Get up, baby. Get up, baby. Get up. Oh, yeah. David Freeze has just sent us into game number seven. I could hear that thing all day long. Listen to the Cardinals. On your Cardinal connection in the Tri-State, KMEM Memphis, Missouri. What a night. What an evening of baseball. 
This is a public service announcement test from TakeMeFishing.org to determine if you need a fishing license and boat registration before heading out on the water. Let us begin. Are you a bear? Do you have a beak? Do you have plumage? Please tell me you answered no, which means you need to get a fishing license and have your boat registered, because it helps local conservation efforts protect the very natural resources you enjoy boating and fishing in for generations to come. Do your part at TakeMeFishing.org. Dr. Weaver, I'm going to brag on you. I know you're a track star from UCLA college days. You were the captain of the women's track team. You're an avid runner. You're, those that have met you know you're tall and thin and a track star. You're being set up, doctor. Watch <laughs> out. Because <laughs> clearly those that have met me know that I never will, never have, and never can be or have been a track star. <laughs> but I, I really really would be interested to know in terms of the supplements you personally you're a, you're a thin um, healthy woman what are, what do you personally take and what do you recommend to the average woman of the 40s to 50s age uh, supplements what's working and what do you recommend that is a very loaded subject and I'm going <laughs> to put a little bit of a burst in the bubble of what you talked about here I I had been a uh, very avid rather. Unfortunately, uh, I was hit by a drunk driver. My pelvis broken and hip dislocated. Wow. Oh, oh. So that kind of ended the running career. So wow. I do everything but now, but um, do truly understand orthopedics. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've actually been down that path and was on crutches for a while as a resident doing orthopedic training. So, um, so yeah, there are supplements that are really and the problem is in the United States do not have um, really good quality control. So yeah. what you may be taking, you may not really know what you're taking and you have to be extremely careful. And if you're taking Chinese herbs, you have to be extremely careful because some of those are very, very strong. And so when, when you walk down that path, it's very important you do your research, and it's very important that you question the company you're getting uh, these pills from or supplements from and ask them what is their quality control. So that said, probably uh, one of the bigger uh, supplements recently are fish oils. And those have been, uh, they're even now recommending it for children, for infants, uh, that that. They do help with your cholesterol. They do help with your general, for, for women that are prone to depression, it can be extremely helpful for that. Um, the other area is if you look at glucosamine and chondroitin. The American study showed there was no uh, value to it. The European studies showed that there was value, but they were using different kinds of supplements. Um, and so here again, you have to be very careful about what it is you're putting in your mouth. Um, for women going through hormonal changes, flaxseed, uh, soy milk, those are areas that can minimize things like hot flashes. Um, and so and they, they are very helpful in, in people who have difficulty sleeping or uh, mood control. Um, not too much. And here again, you don't want to overboard on anything. Uh, you want to go ahead and take the recommended amount, but not you know, just because some is good, you don't want to take massive quantities more. What about natural anti-inflammatories? Uh, you can take things like curcumin, which is turmeric, the stuff that makes uh, curry powder yellow. And that's a very powerful uh, um, antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. But pregnant women should not take it because it can give them cramps. So anytime you, there, there is, and, and this is actually an area I've done a fair amount of research on, um, you have to be very individual. You have to be very careful anytime you're choosing to take a supplement. So, yes, some form of vitamin D, 
Uh, and the, you know, my recommendation to any woman over 26 is a form of calcium, magnesium, vitamin D. Um, and men should start taking that over the age of 65 unless you have things like kidney stones, unless you have certain hormonal problems. So here again, uh, make sure that your levels are good with a physician. You know, get your lab work checked. Don't just start taking things. Um, be very careful of herbal supplements with green tea in them. It's a diuretic, and um, and it also can wire people for sound. Mm-hmm. So you have to be very careful about amount. Some green tea is good. Some caffeine is good. But if you take too much of it, you're going to get cardiac arrhythmias, and you're not going to sleep. And we know that sleep deprivation creates all sorts of problems. How do you feel about hyaluronic acid? That's been a hot one over the last uh, few years for Wonderful joints. Wonderful stuff. Mm-hmm. Works extremely well. I followed it from the time I grew cells when I was doing my fellowship work um, and followed it through Canada and Europe. And hyaluronic acid, especially when it's cross-linked, um, is wonderful stuff. It does not work for something like a torn cartilage. You have to fix your torn cartilage, then have your shots into your knee. Um, so it, but it can be very, very effective. And I, I, you know, I, I use that quite frequently in the armamentarium. Unfortunately, we only have proof of its efficacy in knees, so we can only do that in knees. Um, that's the only one that insurance companies will pay for. Uh, it will be effective in any joint, but you have to make sure that you're actually in the joint, and the knee is the one that we can get in the most consistently. Okay, so you're talking about injecting it in the joint, and uh-huh. and we all know, I mean, you you and I know about that, but people are being um, preached over, you know, over the internet and the infomercials that you can take it orally, and people do take Is that useful, or is it uh, well, snake oil? We know we know that there's a Japanese study that does a lot of hyaluronic acid naturally, and they seem to have less joint problems. We have no scientific proof that I've come across that shows that that piece of hyaluronic acid that you're eating makes it through your gut. So I think that you're not going to hurt yourself with that. It's kind of like the same thing as chewing on the end of of the white part of the chicken bone. Go Mm -hmm. ahead and chew it and swallow it. It's the same thing as Mm -hmm. eating shark fin soup. I mean, basically, that's hyaluronic acid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's no there's no downside to it. It's a food supplement. But in terms of scientific proof, Mm -hmm. uh, we're a little bit lacking on that. We had a caller in just the last minute or two left here uh, asking, "What are the signs of too much vitamin D? If you if you are just taking it sort of without those blood tests, what what does that mean? What could they that can mean? be almost the same as having not enough? Uh, some people will go through hair loss, they'll go through fatigue, they'll go through weight loss, depression. Hair so, loss? That that's it. <laughs> I've been taking vitamin D. <laughs> that explains it. <laughs> so you, you, these are areas that that it's always important. Yeah. When you, when you are taking a supplement that does not flow through your kidney easily um, and is more fat-soluble and stays in your system more, it's extremely important that you watch your levels. Yeah. And those, that's a simple blood test, and you can just ask your doctor about that. Correct. Well, we want to thank you for being with us. Obviously, there is a, a treasure trove of knowledge on the other end of the phone. Yes, lines there is. Here. And, um, folks, if you have any problem with your... Uh, musculoskeletal system um dr weaver obviously can address that i'm writing down flaxseed for hot flashes over here (laughs) (laughs) and again i think uh, the the, there was another thing she said there that was a stealthy little reference to hey if your back's hurting you she's going to look you all over because it may not be in the back primarily it may be in the knee or it may be in the foot or it Mm -hmm. may be in the alignment and so uh, that's the really cool thing about all this and so it's really a to use a, tr- a trite term, a holistic approach to orthopedics, yeah. which I find extremely refreshing and uh, very well informed. And right here in Memphis. I know. It's we too good so to be true. Thank we you, are Dr. blessed. Weaver. We love having you here. Kathleen, thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it, and we're glad you're aboard here at uh, Scotland County Hospital. Thank it's you so my much. It's a pleasure. Y'all have a wonderful fourth. Okay, you too. Take care. Mm, bye bye. All right, Kathleen Weaver. And uh, again, the number is 465 2828. And 1-800-748-7875 here at the station if you have any. uh... Oh, we're out of time. We're out. That's it. Well, man, that was fast. Make sure you come by and say hi to us at the Scotland County uh, Hospital booth at the fair. Yes, indeedy. And free gifts? Yeah. But no colonoscopies. I don't know. You guys come up with that one. I'm like in the dark. Dr. Tom.
Kohler's liking this lottery thing. We need to work on yeah. a marketing plan for that. If you see Bud around, you know, we got to get him to get see, that I'm test. just leery about something that you can't see what's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the last word. There's nothing more. (laughs) Remember this week, be well. Be safe tomorrow. Share the love with everyone you know. We'll see you next time here on Healthy You. Serving Unionville, Lancaster, Memphis, and Cahoka, this is 100.5 KMEM FM, Memphis, Missouri. Our time is 11 a.m. We have what you want to hear. Don't go away.